Hi there. Now, in this video, I want to introduce you to this formula here. It gives us the shortest distance from the point x1, y1 to the line with the form ax plus by plus c equals zero. It's the modulus of ax1 plus by1 plus c, all divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared. And it's a very efficient way of finding the distance from a point to a line, as I'll show you. Now, I'm giving you this formula without any proof, but if you do want to know the proof, then you'll see it in the next video. So to demonstrate this, let's say we've got a line L1. Its equation is 3x minus 4y plus 8 equals 0. So it's in this form here. And I've got two points that I'm going to demonstrate this method with. The point A having coordinates 1 minus 4 and the point B on the other side of the line with coordinates minus 1, 3. So if we're looking for that shortest distance, that will be, say, from A to the line. It'll be a perpendicular drawn to the line. So something like that. That's at right angles. I'll call that distance, let's say, D1. So using this formula, if I just write up here for A, then that distance D1 is going to be equal to the modulus then of AX1. So we take A as being 3 and we multiply it with the X coordinate of A, which is 1. And then to that it's plus BY1. Here it's minus 4. And then we multiply that with the Y coordinate at A, which is also negative 4. And then plus C, so that's going to be plus 8. And that's all divided then by the square root of a squared plus b squared. That's going to be 3 squared plus 4 squared. So we've got all of 3 squared plus 4 squared. And we'll complete the mod there. So working out this top line gives us 27. And the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared is 5. So we've got the mod of 27 over 5. Well, this is a positive value anyway, so it's going to be 27 over 5. Now, if we look at the point B, which is on the other side of the line, you'll see what happens. This time, we'll call that distance, let's say, D2. I won't draw it in because it's just going to get a bit cramped there. But again, it'll be equal to the modulus of A times its x-coordinate. So that would be 3 times the x-coordinate of B, which is negative 1. And then minus 4 times the y-coordinate of B, which is 3. And then plus the 8. And that's all divided by the root of A squared plus b squared. In other words, the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. And we'll close that mod off. Now this time, on the top here, we get negative 7. So we've got the mod of negative 7. And on the bottom, we've got the root of 25, which is 5. And here, you can see we've got a negative value. Length has to be positive, so we take the positive of that and we get 7 fifths. But the point I want to make here is that you'll find that when you get different signs within the mod, it will indicate that the points that you're looking at are on different sides of your line. So that's how you can work out very quickly and efficiently the distance of a point to a line. Now, just as an exercise, I want to show you how we could get, for instance, this result for A. You might want to practice the result after I've done this for B, but it's a great exercise to try. I'll show you what I'm going to do, the method I'm going to use to do this. If we find out the gradient of the line L1, I can then get the gradient of the line that's perpendicular by using the perpendicular gradient rule and then 
knowing that the equation of a line like this one is going to have the form y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1, taking this point for x1 and y1. And then once I've got this equation, I can do simultaneous equations and get this point where it intersects the line. Having got this point here, I can then use the distance between two points, the formula Pythagoras' theorem, to get that distance. So let's see if we can do this. I'll call this point here P, where we've got the shortest distance, this point here touching this line L1. So first of all, I need to get the gradient from this line. So therefore, if I rearrange this, let's just call this L1 again. If I rearrange it, make Y the subject, then what I'm going to get is Y equals 3 quarters X, and then that's plus 2. And I'll call that equation 1. And from that equation, I can get the gradient of L1. So just put that in, gradient L1. That's going to be the M value here, which will be 3 quarters. And so, therefore, I can get the perpendicular gradient, the gradient of, just abbreviate that, gradient of AP. Using the perpendicular gradient rule, where we take the reciprocal of this and negate it, gives us minus 4 thirds. And now that I've got that, I can get the equation of the line passing through A and P. So I'll just call it equation of AP. And we'll say that that is OK. Using Y minus Y1, Y1 being the negative 4, Y minus Y1 equals M, the gradient, minus 4 thirds times x minus x1, x1 being the x coordinate at a. We've got that. And now I can multiply through by 3, and that's going to give me 3y. We've got plus 4 here, so that's 4 times 3 is 12. And expanding minus 4 with the bracket gives me minus 4x plus 4. And now I can just rearrange this. I'll add 4x to both sides and subtract 4. So I end up with 4x plus 3y plus 8 equals 0. And I'll call that equation 2. So now I've got my two equations, the line going through AP, and I've got the line L1. Using simultaneous equations now, I can get the coordinates of P. So what I'm going to do is substitute, just put a note here, substitute equation 1 in equation 2. And if I do that, I therefore end up with 4x plus 9x over 4 plus 6, and then plus the 8, and that equals 0. And then if I just border that off, if I multiply through by 4 here, I'm going to get 16x plus 9x. Let's just put it up here. We get 16x plus the 9x. And then we've got the 6 and 8, which is 14, times it by 4, and you're going to get 56. So we've got plus 56, and that equals 0. So I've got 25x here. Subtract the 56 from both sides and divide by 25 gives me x equals minus 56 over 25. And what I can now do to get the y coordinate at p is just substitute this into equation 1 to get y. Okay, so just put a note here sub in equation 1, and we end up with y equaling 3 quarters of x, which is minus 56 over 25, and then we've got plus the 2. Working this out gives us 8 over 25. So we've now got the 
x and y coordinates of p. So let's just summarize that. We've therefore got the coordinates of p as being minus 56 over 25, and the y coordinate is 8 25ths. So now we've got p. We know the coordinates of a. I can use the distance between two points, that formula, which is based on Pythagoras' theorem, that that distance d is going to be equal to the square root of the difference between the x-coordinates squared plus the difference between the y-coordinates squared. So if we do the x-coordinates first, that will be 1 there. So we've got 1 minus, minus the 56 over 25, and that's all squared, plus the difference between the y-coordinates all squared. So that's negative 4 minus the 8 25ths. And if I square that. So you're going to need a calculator most probably to work that out. And you end up with the square root then of 729 over 25. And this is a nice exact value. Remember, we're looking for a positive value here because it's distance. And so we end up with 27 over 5. And you can see that agrees with what we have up here. But just take a look at how long this method is. Great practice for just doing algebra and basic coordinate geometry, but a lot longer. So worthwhile trying to remember this formula here. But you might want to see if you can work out B as an exercise by a similar kind of method here. You know the answer. It should be 7 fifths. So I'll leave it up to you as an exercise to try that. But I hope anyway that you've got some value out of this tutorial.